All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today, we have bringing on once again another PhD. Uh, this time, we're talking to a gentleman who's got his own consulting company, and he's now taking consulting to the DNA level. And we're going to be talking more about estrogenics, which there's your buzzword of the day, estrogenics. And uh, it sounds like a really cheesy commercial we can get into as well, but I'm sure we'll have fun with, uh, with today's episode no matter what, diving into this because uh, understanding our genetics in general has always been complicated for a lot of uh, average day listeners or just people just trying to understand more about their health, wellness, and fitness. So without further ado, we are talking to today Dr. J, aka Anthony J of AJ Consulting Company. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is great. I'm All excited. right, ma'am. So Dr. J, so how long have you been using Dr. J, man? So did you just start working not, on that one? Not long, yeah. You got to work that more. That's that, there's some branding on that. So uh, Yeah, it's, it's, it's memorable. Well, thank, and, uh, thank, you, thank you to Irv, uh, Julius Irving. <laughs> Julius Irving. So shout out to Julius Irving. And, and, yeah. and why do I shout out to him? Well, I guess he's a basketball player. I, I'm a little bit young to remember, but oh, yeah. he called Dr. I J. Wanted to, that was my test. I wanted to see if you knew what you were talking about on that because yeah. I know because I'll, I'll be turning 40 this year, so I do understand that. I'm not that old, no. but yeah, I do yeah. know Dr. J. So uh, a, lot, a big part of basketball history. So yeah, now, and, and A lot of people accidentally call me J instead of Anthony, right? It's, it's a little confusing for people because they go with the first it, name, last it name. Does, which, it does have like a double first name connotation there. Yeah, I can get that. Yeah. So yep. now does everybody just say AGJ because your middle initials G? A lot of people call me AJ, up? yep. When I used to play hockey, uh, I played on my brother's team. We're only about a year apart, and uh, we played on the same team for a lot of years, and, and we both had J on the back of our jersey, so I had to have A period J, right, <laughs> instead of just my last name. So everybody just called me AJ growing up, and it stuck a little bit. But Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, you've uh, you got a lot of different names. We're just going to go with Anthony today. Um, so the cool thing also to our listeners, guys, is that this guy is also, once again, an author. All right. We've had on numerous authors on this show as well. So we already kind of hinted at some of the branding here, the whole Estro Gen, and the book's actually called Estro Generation. And I believe this is also available on Amazon, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So actually pretty much any person worth their salt who's trying to you know, move a book online better have it on Amazon these days. Uh, actually, my question to you is, do you have it on Audible yet? I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because right. I'm a big a pusher of Audible. Yeah. I had to read it myself and it took me a little bit longer than I was hoping in terms of getting it cleaned up and edited and everything, but it's out. Well, and unfortunately for you and I, we literally just got connected. So in the past couple of weeks, so normally I, as I told you in the email, I prefer to like try and review some of the content and you did at least send out some supplemental information to help me get a little bit more prepared. Uh, but I am going to be downloading that book off of Audible because I have a physical library, yep. but my digital library is way bigger now because right. I just, I travel so much. I'm either listening to podcasts yep. or I'm listening to audiobooks. Yep. and I will tell you kudos for taking the commitment to author your own book. This is just my opinion I've had on people who have paid people to do the voiceover. And my issue with that is that just like why I love podcasting, it's less personal. I want the personalization like you and I today having a conversation. And if it's just a paid voiceover artist, they're just going to read it verbatim. Right. Whereas for you, you have the option of going off script if you want and adding in little extra nuggets of content and knowledge that maybe you couldn't get into the physical book. And sometimes that happens. I don't know if you actually did that for yourself or not. Uh, for, well, I don't know about coming off script, but I definitely have, obviously I have a lot more emphases and more excitement. And the other thing is, you know, I'm the, one of the key point, one of the, my main, uh, I don't know, driving f uh, passions or f focuses in the book was mm -hmm. I want to make it simple for everybody, right? Readable for everybody, but there's some medical terms in there, right? So, you know, I, I didn't want to, some somebody who doesn't know how to pronounce these crazy terms, pronouncing them and having to go through. So there's a lot of aspects to me reading it. I think, like you said, the most important is the excitement, the passion, the emphasis on specific points. Yeah. And that's, that's what I hopefully brought, brought to the table. I don't know. <laughs> well, and for our newer listeners from episode 50, 50, 50 or 51 on, we're now, whenever I can, I'm trying to using our Zoom system like we are today. So if people listening in, if you guys want to physically see the book too, I'm literally sharing my screen on Zoom right now. And nice. let me bring that up here. 
And I love, I mean, it's fun. And we're going to dig in this a little bit here right off the bat, because obviously the, the brand or the name on this is estro generation, right? How estrogenics are making you fat, sick, and infertile. Interesting yep. choice, by the way, really nailing it with the infertile word. Um, yep. But at the top, you have their, uh, is that pronounced sh- uh, chagrin or ch- chagrin? Chagrin and tonic series. What is that all about? Are you literally trying sure. to create a series of books? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that's, what I, that's why I couldn't figure out from my research before this call. And I want to dig into that because some people may think that's the initial title. Obviously, when you threw the word series under it, that helps answer that. But I figured there's something of a lineage you're trying to create here. That's, that's true. And so I actually have another book coming out called Blubber Brain. Yes. You that's did mention be, that. Yeah. And that's going to be in the Chagrin and Tonic series. So that'll be part two of the series, right? And, and again, that one's going to focus on you know, fats and the brain and ketones and the mitochondria and a lot of these aspects, cholesterol, and it's going to simplify the science for people, but it's also in the chagrin and tonic series. And then I've got another one after that, right? So on the MTHFR gene, actually, wow. but I kind of have a bunch of them lined up and, and I'm also branding that as my YouTube uh, title. Oh, the, so the, check is the way to find me on YouTube because I make little short videos every week. Now, hold on. So wait, so for the YouTube, because again, to our, to our listeners, guys, and I, I'll have it up here on the screen as well. Um, we're obviously talking right now about estro generation. His brand per his signature here, and obviously per the website is yep. AJ Consulting Company. There you go. So these are all brands within his parent brand, because I'm a marketer. I got to always explain this. AJ Consulting Company is his umbrella. That's his parent brand. Estro Generation is the book. And then obviously what we're learning here today is off of that book is the, am I saying it right? The ch- Chagrin? Chagrin. Uh, chagrin. 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 Like, I got to get that. It's like an emotional <laughs> response, right? Like you see something and you're disgusted with it. So you look at it with chagrin. Oh, okay. I was so, going mean, to ask for the definition. It's kind of a play on words because I was going for gin and tonic, chagrin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the gin and tonic piece because I okay. love how that, but I was like, what am I missing on the chagrin piece? And I love the graphic, by the way, here of literally you see a, a beautiful tree graphic of one that's dying. And then the other half of it is still obviously thriving and alive and let's be honest, this is a lot of us these days are literally in that state where we are slowly dying, maybe not 50, 50, like the, like the picture showing here, (laughs) you you have like the left side of your body dying and your right side is good. But the whole point here is that we're in a constant state of flux. That's right. And and, yeah, I was going to say, maybe to explain the chagrin and tonic background a little bit more even is definitely kind of what I was going for was health problems. I'm presenting a health problem, at least in my YouTube video. And I guess in my book too, health problem, and then a solution, right? Chagrin is the problem. And then the tonic is, would be the solution. So that's kind of the contrast I'm going for. Okay. And you see that in the, in the, in the image with that tree. So without Googling that, um, myself, the chagrin, that is a, just a made up word then you're saying, or is there actually, is that a defined word? Oh yeah. That's a, that's a, Word people don't use it very often, but that's it's, right. Uh, yeah, so it's in a, it is in a glossary somewhere, <laughs> or, or or in a th- oh, yeah. thesaurus, yeah. I should say. So cool. That's right. So and actually, let me bring this back up here. Oh man, that's, the physical book's only ten bucks. Okay, guys, listeners, take action right now. Pause this episode. Okay, just get the darn book because like that's cheap. All right, usually I have to wait for my Audible discount things that happen every single month to get some really good deals on books, but that's not bad at all. So. Obviously, this is your digital ebook download only for that price, but and okay. there is a physical too, right? That's right, and that okay. one's about, it's about sixteen or fourteen, depending on whether you want the hardcover oh. or, the, or the you know the or Kindle. paperback. That's right. There's paperback. There's hardcover. Oh, you've I, done it all. You did hardcover, paperback, ebook, and That's Audible. Right. That's right. Well, my wife works for a publishing company, and <laughs> so she did. She actually did the Kindle version. I mean, I retained all the rights for that. Smart move, smart move. Yeah, uh, and the hardcover is only so libraries can pick it up. So libraries have come to me and they said, you know, we want your book, but we need the hardcover. Thankfully, I had that already in place, but that's okay. the main reason I have it. Now, obviously, that's a higher publishing cost. And that's why a lot of people aren't doing the hardcover. But I think, I mean, for example, like, do you follow John Lee Dumas of EO Fire? Entrepreneur on Fire? He's one of the, yeah. most, he's one of the most successful podcasters, but... His, his last two book releases, his journals are, you know, physical, hard bound uh, products. And yep. there's, there's not really an E, there is an E version of it, but really the whole point was to finally produce a physical product because some people like to physically hold something. Admittedly, I just don't have the time to sit down and read anymore. For some reason, my brain just loves absorbing through auditory channels. So 
Yeah, me too. Me too. And a lot of people nowadays. So let's get back to the whole, obviously we talked a little about the series here, estro generation. Okay. Yep. Why you and I are connecting today and we'll eventually get into the blubber brain piece too. Cause I love the, I love the name on that. You're, we're going to have a lot of fun with that from a marketing perspective. So what led you to get this first part of the series, I guess, created? Yeah. So I gave a talk in Florida about uh, artificial estrogen chemicals that are in our environment. Mm-hmm. And essentially what they're doing to our health. And it's a long list of problems. It's about, you know, seven health problems. And the way I kind of discovered those health problems as a scientist, as a researcher, was I started thinking, okay, if you're pregnant, right, as a woman, if a woman is pregnant, you know, and their estrogen goes way up, um, you know, you start to see natural changes within their body. And that's, it's not unhealthy by any means, but you see some changes like fat gains, right? You see your body actually stores fat because there's a baby there. And if you, for some reason, you know, can't find food, that baby needs that energy in the form of fat. Fat is the most dense form of energy in a body. And I geek out on fat cells because I know I, we probably don't need to get this specific, but I have to, I'm always trying to consistently educate people. Guys, when he says store fat, our body's not, at least not yet, not necessarily creating new fat cells. What it's doing is you're literally filling up your existing fat cells. So right. I, a lot of people don't understand that sometimes. They think, oh, uh, uh, I'm unhealthy and I'm, I'm creating more fat. I'm like, no, dude, they're just plumping up. Like your fat cells are designed to protect you. Like they're going to absorb things. Am I incorrect on explaining it that way? No, that's perfect. Triglyceride okay. is, yeah. Triglyceride is kind of the non-toxic form of fatty acids. There's three fatty acids in a triglyceride essentially. Yeah. Well, it's because like literally yeah. today... So today I'm fasting and I, I, every, every, well, nowadays about once a quarter, I go through a full blown nutritional detox, nutritional cleanse. I've been using a company, Isogenic since 2010. I use their cleansing, which is based on the Ayurvedic lifestyle from India. And anyway, so the point is like, I love going through fasting and detox. I'm doing it since 2010. And because yep. I just I feel a resurgence of energy. And the only reason why is because even me being a health and fitness nut, we still have all the stressors in our environments. And you're, I know you're going to be able to like expand on this, but the whole point is that even my fat cells are still absorbing excess tox- toxicity that my liver and gallbladder and everything else is, has not been able to break down and, and like filter out and everything else. Right. So it's, right. float, it's floating around in your bloodstream and your body's like, all right, dude, if I can't filter this, the normal process, and my, I'm not at peak detoxification levels, I'm going to store it out of the way to keep yep. things moving smoothly. And again, this is the non-doctor's explanation. <laughs> uh, that's a great understanding. Most people don't realize that. Um, in fact, it's funny because I'm actually in a fasted state also. I haven't eaten since yesterday. Boom. And for our listeners, it's about noon right now. So at least yeah. I'm like... I, I don't exceed 48 hours. So like this, th- right now today, I'm only doing a single day. Uh, nope. But when, when I first started doing this, I, I would do uh, two, I would do a 48 hour week one, a 48 hour week two, and that was it. Uh, for the, for, that, for a 30 day period. And then I'd be using their nutritional shakes and everything else. But that was my introduction. Now over years later, I, you know, my lifestyle changes my, I'm like, you know what? I traveled a lot this week. Um, I'm in, I'm in what, what's called our ISA body challenge. So I want the photos to look a little bit better. Cause I have to submit them by the 25th here. And today's the 21st of April. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I know that I go through a fasted state. I boost my detoxification. My body's attacking the fat cells. It's releasing the stored toxins. But now I'm at a healthier, because of the stuff that I'm drinking, I'm at a healthier state. I know my body's going to be able to flush more of that out. So usually, right. I'm usually going to end up a little leaner, right? I'm not, yep. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to remove inflammation. Yeah, and, the, and, and toxins, like you already said. Mm-hmm. Toxins. It's funny. I was eating lunch with a bunch of scientists when I was doing my PhD. <clears throat> and uh, one of them, we were, we were talking about fasting because I used to do uh, brain research. I used to do Alzheimer's before I switched into fat research lipids. Oh, did you study with uh, Dr. Perlmutter or? No, but I actually, I was just down in Naples and I actually went to his house and went guy. to his clinic and everything. I'm jealous. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, back on the Alzheimer's thing. So I was eating lunch and, and of course, autophagy is increased when you're fasting and that that essentially means cellular eating Mm -hmm. and it's a little bit of a kind of a complicated side story that I maybe don't want to get into, but (laughs) we can save that for another episode. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Especially when I get this book blubber brain published. Oh yeah. But, uh, 
we were talking about fasting because it increases autophagy and it's so darn good for your brain. And none of the scientists in the room had ever fasted in their life. And it was so and funny. And they were studying this? That's right. These are the guys that are sitting there every day studying it and seeing how beneficial. And I, I personally do a three-day fast every year. Wow. And just some of it is just biohacking and just kind of yep. self-experimentation. I do other fasting segments that aren't quite as extreme, but it's pretty darn extreme because it's just water for three days. Yeah. But oh, uh, you're, going, you're going old school. You're not doing any support system at all. But that's, like okay. I say, that's pretty extreme. And yeah. it's just me kind of experimenting, seeing what happens to my, my brain and everything else. And it actually really cranks, amps up my brain. But here, but oh, let's uh, real quick on the brain for our listeners and uh, autophagy. Yeah, fancy words aside to our listeners who aren't as scientific. Guys, no. this is gonna be powerful. What's the percentage of our brain that's fat tissue? Oh, most of it. Thank you. I don't know the exact number, but yeah, absolutely. It's the fattiest organ in your body after uh, fat. Oh, uh, yeah. So when we're doing this low fat lifestyle, it's, horrible a whole, for it's terrible for our brain. Okay. So this is all goes back to what you're talking. I just, I just had to get that little segue in there because I'm constantly trying to drive that into people. It's a great point. Yeah. Especially with kids, right? I mean, these parents that are giving their kids low fat diets, mm -hmm. low cholesterol, all this, it's so detrimental for their brains. Yeah. But, but here's, here's the little side story I was going towards. Uh, so uh, I, I was a part of uh, Toastmasters, this public speaking group. Mm -hmm. And my first speech when I, I joined the group when I was living in Boston. Now, for the listeners also, I just moved to Minnesota about a week ago. But um, anyways, when I, when I was in Toastmasters in Boston, first speech I gave, I was on that, I was doing that three-day fast. And I was literally on the third day. And, and I, I felt fine, right? I went to the thing, you know, it was my first time there. I've never even been there. And they made me stand up and give a couple minute speech, which isn't daunting at all because I give speeches all the time, you know, as a scientist and all this. But uh, anyway, I, the adrenaline came through my body and it just, re it went through so fast and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I gave the speech just fine, but I literally, you know, just two minute speech. I, I was pretty shaky and everything. Yeah. It was really funny. I, I felt like a complete... So you know, were, you, were you like high? Like, yeah, a little bit. I had yeah, to go like, to the, I, I said after the talk and I, after I sat down, I said, excuse me, where's the bathroom? Cause I didn't know the building and I got to go to the bathroom and I just had to go to the bathroom and just kind of like get sit composure. down and, and yeah. yeah, just kind of sit in a quiet room. It was really, yeah, and, and let, let's, let's, let's be real here uh, for our listeners. You know, you're promoting a, a fasted state right now. I'm in a fasted state. Uh, let's be real guys. If you are new, this is a process. We have learned and taught this to ourselves. Like the way I did it in 2010 is still very similar because I follow a specific program, but I've still modified that to adapt with how my lifestyle has changed over the years. I originally did it because I had left the corporate world and just for your advantage, AJ, 2010, 2011, I served with the federal government doing, I was served as an elite hotshot wildland firefighter. So I was literally hiking in the mountains, breathing smoke, you know, 40, 50 pounds a year on your back, 25 pound chainsaw, working 16 hour shifts a day. If you're on a major fire, you go two weeks straight without a day off uh, wow. until, until you hit your, your, uh, your day off release. And then they release you from the fire for two days only of rest and recovery. And then wow. we do that all summer long. So we would wow. literally do range between like 2010 was just around 1900 hours and six months worked. And 2011 was 2000 hours worked. And if you do a standard nine to five or a person working in a cubicle with two weeks of paid vacation a year, that's what you do in a year. That's 2000 hours. If you do the math. So wow. wow. Yeah. That's where I was like, I literally went to Boston. Nice. At, I, 2010. I went to Ireland after finishing the fire season. So this is October backpacked Ireland, had a blast, had one of my tattoos touched up nice in Dublin. So, um, <laughs> uh, Scott William Mulva Mulvaney over there, it's pronounced Mulvaney. I'm obviously Irish by bloodline. Anyway, nice. came back and I was doing uh, some CEU credits up in Boston. So I went to a fitness event there and I took, I took a class on toxicology of the body. Hmm. And I was like, why isn't my energy back to where it was? It had been almost two months since the fire season had been done. And I've, this is before I understood accumulated exhaustion and toxicity of the body. Like this is early. Anyway, that's what got me originally to even try that isogenic system because Everything made sense, but I still took about a month to research it after I, the woman who was teaching the class, she, she's the one who got me into that company and using their systems, but I took, a, I took an extra month to research it. I was like, you know what? Hey, everything seems to be naturally sourced. Great company. For somebody who's new to it like me, I wanted a support system to plug into 
just to try nice. it out because I had never even done any form of cleansing before or detoxing or fasting. Yep. And I, I didn't even understand that, for example, now I'm a big supporter of intermittent fasting. So like when you wake up yep. in the morning, who cares if you don't eat until lunch? You know, it's actually not that bad. No. Oh yeah. In fact, <laughs> lunch when becomes I do, breakfast. When I- when I'm writing my books and just writing in general, I find that, so I don't particularly like writing, you know, I, I'm not motivated to sit down and write oftentimes, but if I'm in a fasted state in the morning, and I haven't eaten anything for some reason I am motivated and I sit down and I write a lot. Oh yeah. And that's amazing. And the other aspect, so you were talking about this detoxing. Mm-hmm. So I talk about that in the end of my book because, you know, obviously I discuss the artificial estrogens we're exposed to, you know, how bad they are for your health how they act on your DNA and your epigenetics and all this. And then, then the question, of course, comes, well, what do you do about that? And, and one of the things you do is you detox because these things cause fat gains, like mm-hmm. we said, but they also get stored in your fat. And we were hinting at that before. And so, yeah, you got to get rid of them. And there's certain, you know, certain established ways you can do that, one, including maybe a sauna, right? You can mm-hmm. heat your body up. Oh yeah, there's, there's, that's why, I mean, yoga, for example, yoga is such a healthy practice uh, and not the fitness yoga. I'm talking about like the, leg- I mean, yes, yeah, there's hot yoga. I actually, I do enjoy a little hot yoga once in a while. Um, but I will tell you the first time I did a hot yoga combined with a fasting day, that's risky. I was, I, 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 I needed to, I needed to experiment with that a little bit more. This was a few years ago when I was living in Colorado because I was like, man, I went in. I was like, oh, yeah, it was day two of my fasted detoxing, and I went into a real wow. hot yoga, and I was like, I was in a weird state of mind. I'll just say Interesting. that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, part of it, like we were discussing before, it, I mean, people, I'm glad you are aware of this and you have a good, rec- a good grasp of this, but a lot of people don't, and I'm explaining this constantly to people, so maybe I'll add a little bit more on this. Um, yeah. I've got a friend who is in college with me, and he got diagnosed with schizophrenia and a lot of mental disorders, and hmm. they put him on some you know, pretty serious mental disorder drugs. All pharmaceutical. And, that's right. Oh, yeah. And he, I call that the pharma band-aid, but you know. Yeah, oh, it, that's exactly right. And of course, I, I went and told them to get off the gluten and this and that, and, but you know, aside from all the consulting stuff, uh, he went, he went from like a scrawny guy. I mean like 150 pound, six foot guy, just skinny and scrawny to over 300 pounds of inflammatory weight. Oh, it was brutal. And, and what, and you know, of course the doctor say, well, that drug that he's taking, he had all these drugs and, oh, they're not really toxic, right? We've done the tox toxicity studies. You're well, introducing something of a foreign nature into something that was almost a perfect machine. I don't care who we are. You're going to create some kind of side effect. I don't need to watch the television to hear all your fancy commercials that tell me about all the side effects. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and, and your body, even if it's, let's pretend for a minute it wasn't toxic. Your body perceives it as a toxin, obviously, because it's reacting by creating fat stores yeah. and putting, putting that quote unquote toxin into those fat stores so that it doesn't kill your brain, right? Yeah. Because because your body's, happen. your Don't fat is designed that. to protect you. I've, Buffer. Yep. I've had on Dr. Sylvia Terra. She uh, just released her book a few months ago, The Secret Life of Fat. She's a biochemical okay. PhD researcher. I don't know if you've ever crossed paths with her. Yep. Uh, she lives out in LA. Her book is amazing. I've listened to it three times now. She's been on nice. the podcast. Great episode. But she talks about literally how people need to understand, even, and this was even educational to me only mm-hmm. a few months ago, that the fat cells are a actual organ of the yeah. body. Just endocrine like the organ. skin is an organ yeah. of the body. Exactly, an endocrine organ. It's a necessary, so he's just like, when you got people trying to lipo out their fat, she's like, it's going to come back because you haven't reprogrammed your body. You haven't fixed yeah. the root cause issue. Yeah. And it goes back to what you're saying. If you're introducing toxins or foreign pharmaceuticals into the body, especially yeah. because, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just saying, we all know that a lot of that is guesswork. They don't know the proper dosages until they introduce it to your body and then see how you react. I can speak to this because, not to get a little personal, but I have a sister who has suffered from depression for many years. I have seen all kinds of freaking cocktails that they have pumped her full of. Yep. And it's just, oh, it's just very frustrating because there's like you get two or three different drugs going in. And you don't know how they're going to react in that biochemical makeup in that body because everybody's different. So that's true. Well, and one of, kind of one of the one of the underlying principles in my book that I really try and get through to people is uh, 
you know, we have all these different artificial estrogens. One of them, for example, is red food coloring. Mm. One artificial red food coloring. One of them is, you know, parabens in fragrances. Yep. You know, I have a top 10 list, but what people, what I'm trying, what I'm, one of the principles I try and really drive home is these are cumulative, you know, they build up in your body and they're additive. So let's say you've got, you they know, just red them. food coloring. Right? Yeah, yeah. As you add other, you know, artificial estrogens, they're all acting on your estrogen receptor. They're acting like estrogen in your body. So they're all acting kind of in the same way. So this is, it becomes a bigger and bigger problem as you're exposed to more and more different varieties of these chemicals. So it, and again, I'm coming in from the layman's perspective here. So the whole estrogen perception, all this thing, right? So let's go with my favorite topic of soy. (laughs) I just, I, at a very basic level, I always tell people like, listen, I'm not against vegetarian or vegan practices. I have friends who live with both, but I do remind people, please be careful with heavy soy consumption. Okay. We were never designed to absorb that much or consume that much. And unfortunately, especially in the vegan lifestyle, they find themselves leaning towards a manufactured processed soy protein as a replacement from the essential animal-based uh, proteins. So long story short there is that, am I incorrect in saying that excessive soy triggers estrogen production? It affects your hormonal levels? Absolutely. You're, you're correct. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's called phytoestrogen, plant estrogen. Yeah. Flax does it too. A lot of people don't realize flax has a lot of phytoestrogen. There was a study that looked at over 100 food items in plants, you know, uh, various plants that people eat. Mm-hmm. And uh, they looked at the phytoestrogen content, how much, you know, plant estrogen these things create. And soy was over 100,000 uh, micrograms per 100 grams of soybeans. What does that relate to for, again, average, average understanding here? Like what are we talking about? Well, give you, yeah, let me give you a couple of relative numbers. So soy was over 100,000. Okay. Flax was over 300,000. Oh. Every, every other food item was under 1,000 micrograms of phytoestrogen. When you say other food, I'm as far as any whole food? Or? That's right. They're all okay. whole foods, like broccoli, whatever. Yeah. You know? And yeah. they did a lot of them. And, uh, and I do love my broccoli. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. I mean, I used to live next to a soybean field growing up in Minnesota. That's why I moved back to Minnesota, by the way. My family's here. Okay. But, and my wife's family is also from here. <clears throat> but uh, I used to live by a soybean field, and we would go out as kids and eat the soybeans, which probably wasn't particularly healthy because they're probably spraying it with all kinds of stuff. Well, but, hold on. How, how old are you right now? Uh, I'm 32. Okay. So I was born in 77. I'll be 40 this year. So, okay. We've got a difference of what, six to seven years. I don't know. See, when I, I grew up on a farm, okay. It's not, as bad. It, it's not as bad, yeah. We weren't spraying like we do today. So mm-hmm. I, I always got to remind, I don't want to get off topic here because I love where you're going with this. But to clarify the whole, again, I, I, this is a whole big ball of wax, gluten, all this crap. I, I keep, again, I'm not the scientist, but I'm like, guys, this is much bigger than the gluten thing. The gluten thing is a side effect of the root cause of the fact that we're using too many foreign chemicals on the plants and bioengineering everything. That's a spinoff of that. In reality, I truly feel that our body is negatively reacting to the, the residual chemicals at, that are left in the plants once we've you know, processed them. Yeah, I mean, so, our, we've never adapted to this stuff. And that's kind of where I'm going is, well, let, let me just finish the story. So I used yeah, yeah. to go out in the, in the soybean field and eat the soybeans with my brothers, right? We just pick them, shell them, and eat them. Sure. And I mean, you can only eat like, I don't know, a couple beans and you get a kind of a distaste in your mm-hmm. mouth. It's kind of gross. You know, you can go out in the garden and eat a ton of sweet peas or, you know, whatever other broccoli, like you say, you can eat quite a lot of that. But if you're actually eating whole soybeans, you get pretty, your body tells you, stop yeah. like, pretty rapidly, right? If, if but, it's healthy enough to tell you that. Luckily, you were young, so your body was still kind of pure. <laughs> good point. That's a good point. Well, yeah. the thing is, is we're, now we're processing it, and we're disguising a lot of that reaction, you know, by adding other chemicals, a lot of or, salt. Or we've changed whatever. that original soy plant, right, to make yep, it more yep. consumable. And people are just eating a ton of it, and it's in the salad dressings, right? It's in yep. all kinds of things, and it's pretty darn estrogenic. But here's, here's one point I want to bring out on, on some of this. So, the phytoestrogens, the plant estrogens, uh, they're, you know, we've been exposed to those historically in our environments as humans. So our gut bacteria, if you have a real good gut bacteria, a gut biome, mm-hmm. you do degrade a lot of that phytoestrogen. I'm not, okay. I'm not saying go out and eat a bunch of soy anyways and you know, like push your body to the limits. 
especially if you're a man or if you're concerned about obesity or depression or, you know, all this other. Or problem. you don't want man boobs. That's right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I just did a YouTube video uh, yesterday about gynecomastia, man boobs in, from ex- lavender exposure, because lavender is another one that a lot of people don't the know. Flower? But, the, fla- the, the lavender extract, like essential oils and-, and Oh uh, God, the whole essential oil thing. Don't get me on that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I know there's some good and some bad, yep, but yep. I think the biggest issue with that is probably the levels of concentration. It's like people are just incorporating too right. much of it into their lives. That's right. You're, you're extracting these oils. And then they've literally shown in the New England Journal of Medicine, this is the paper I was going through on my Chagrin and Tonic YouTube channel, that lavender in a bunch of cases- causes man boobs, gynecomastia, and these people rubbing on their skin. And, and essentially, they removed the lavender exposures from these people, and their gynecomastia resolved. It just went away. Yeah. And, and you know, of course, other scientists kind of argued against that, and they, made, they brought up some issues. But the issues, the arguments were pretty weak, I have to admit. Like I say, I went through it on my video, and I've dug into it. And lavender is another one, because if you're rubbing it on your skin at these real high doses you're you don't have direct the, access yeah you're going your right gut bacteria don't have the option to break it down yeah. right so it's yeah. going right through your skin and that's a that's one of the classical things with all of these artificial estrogens is you know they act like hormones right i mean you put them on your skin like in the sunscreen yeah. you find you find these in the sunscreen and you know, it's funny we're talking about this i i am one thing i've always sworn to do with this show going forward and it's really just has really helped improve me as a person is that I will not hide anything and I will t- say it how it is and be completely transparent. Dude, I'm not joking. Years ago, I Googled gyno, I'm sorry, how'd you say again? Gynecomastia. <laughs> Gynecomastia. Yep. Because I had very large like man nipples. So this, yep. to my listeners, there you go. Scott has some big man nipples. <laughs> All right. I don't care because I know there's other gentlemen out there probably suffering from that. And I yep. literally looked into, and I, it was disgusting. I saw s- photos of surgical procedures where they would actually go in and cut into the man's uh, pectoral area yep. to remove the, the fatty tissue. And like literally you would see massive, uh, you know, chunks of like fat that had basically expanded in that area. And it, this is many, many years ago, but I just yep. didn't know this is before I really started becoming obsessed with my fitness. Cause like things would really start looking good everywhere else. But then I felt like I still had that, I don't know, not meatier area, to be fair, it's just a fattier area. And it's yep. just interesting we're talking about this today. I, haven't, I have not looked at that word in years. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's coming up in the research with obviously artificial estrogens and BPA. You know, you were probably exposed to a lot more BPA back then. Hmm. And that's the reason BPA is bad is it acts it's like it's, it's one of the estrogenics. And you're referring and to like BPA plastics, right? Bisphenol A, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. merely like if people see me traveling in my car, I have – Sometimes two, three, four big Nalgene bottles. I'm hydrating like crazy. Now, yep. obviously, through that education years ago, I threw those out, upgraded yep. to that. And even nowadays, people are saying, hey, maybe we should move completely away from all plastics, even if it is BPA-free. And I do use more stainless steel. Like, I'm literally drinking out of a stainless steel yep. clean canteen right now. Shout yep. out to Clean Canteen. You don't sponsor this show, but you should. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but the point is, like, that I, again, I probably did because being athletic, um, Actually, yeah, I guarantee you because I was, that's when I first got into road cycling. I was doing 100 plus miles a week. I was teaching spinning at 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So I was always drinking out of my plastic, uh, you know, cyclist water bottles. And those right. were all pre BPA knowledge. That's interesting. I wonder that's if that's right. what it was. Huh. Well, and, and, and the federal government has just done nothing for us on this. I mean, BPA is still legal in the United States for children's bottles and all this stuff. And are you are- serious? The baby yeah, and, bottles? And a lot of, there's like, I, I go through this in my book because there's, I think, 17 states have made children's items illegal for BPA, right? For manufacturers. Yeah. To, but I know California is always ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. So the states have had to jump in and make their own laws on this because the federal government's not coming in. But here's the other problem is a lot of people don't realize when they go BPA free, some companies change the molecule slightly and they make BPS, bisphenol S. Oh, which, and they're allowed to use that? And that's, of course, legal because it's not called BPA. Oh and that's God. just as estrogenic. So a lot of times it comes down to whether you can trust the companies or not. And oh, admittedly, like I've, um, I've, I think the reason why, I think it's, I think Nalgene, the reason why I use Nalgene is because they are made in the USA. Um, I'm a big supporter of Camelback. I love Camelbacks for, because I'm a mountain biker too. So I love their bladder systems and everything else. But then unfortunately, most of their bottles are all made in China. 
And yeah. I don't yeah. care how good you want to control it. I know for a fact you're not controlling manufacturing over there. I don't know what the hell is going into those. And I, I don't know. And until yeah. it gets, until yeah. it gets illegal across the entire country, to your point, I, yeah. I gotta, I gotta try and make good decisions where I can. And this is, this is important for our listeners to hear this because even people like you and I who are trying to stay as, as ahead of the curve as we can and ed- educated, even sometimes to an obsessive point, <laughs> but yeah. somebody has to, right? Like, That's right. and then we gotta be using platforms like this to get the education out there. And maybe yep. the listener right now who's hearing this, maybe you are not ready to hear this right now, but at least you did hear it. And as you start listening to your, a prior co-host called it your inner physician. Okay. Listening to your inner physician and saying, you know what? Am I open to this information? Am I staying open? And maybe you're not ready today, but you can come back and listen to this a week from now, a month from now, two months from now, because this is education. This is knowledge. So I had to get that point out there. It's power. Knowledge is power in this case. And that's one of the reasons I wrote the book. I wanted people to recognize this because they're not being told that red food coloring is estrogenic. And it's legal. That red food coloring is illegal in places like Japan. And what is the red food coloring derived from? Is it technically uh, plant based or no? No, no, not the artificial red food coloring. Now, sometimes yeah. company, co- good companies use beet juice extract, and that's right. just fine. That's perfectly fine. So I always have to remind myself to say artificial red food coloring. That's a very, very good point. The word artificial, and this goes back to I literally need to do another episode. Uh, one of my regular listeners actually Facebook messaged me. So shout out to Brian Strausser. He's been on the show too. And he's like, Hey man, you really need to bring up a labels episode and yeah. have one done about how to teach people what to read on these labels because everybody goes right to the, to the gram measurements of sugar and everything else, which is important. I'm all about sugar free, but you got to read the fine print paragraphs yep. underneath that label because yep. that's where those key words like artificials coming in and everything else. Here we go. For our YouTube listeners, he's got up. What is that? These are corn tortillas. Uh, I'll never eat those things. But anyway, <laughs> I did when I was firefighting because I was in New Mexico and Arizona. So yeah, and uh, wait, you might, it's still you trying to focus. Well, anyway, it's not focusing, but go ahead and read a couple of those right. things. Well, so that package here, I've got corn tortillas. I'm showing the viewers on video. They've got methyl and propyl parabens as preservatives on the ingredient label. They put parabens in that? They use parabens because they kill bacteria because they're so artificial, but they act like estrogen in our bodies. Oh my God. And and it's in the fragrance too. So everybody, I mean, mean, not everybody, but a lot of people are starting to recognize that, yeah, parabens are bad because they act like estrogen and they're pervasive in the, in the fragrances. You're spraying fragrance on your skin and it's loaded with parabens. See, I never became obsessed with parabens until admittedly, and not to dwell on that company, but Isogenics, I was always using their nutrition and the cleansing. And then all of a sudden I was at one of their big education events in Vegas and they're like, oh my God, we have the most exciting announcement ever. And like all the ladies like leaped out of their seats. There was like 9,000 people there because they announced a new, um, like all of their skincare, they launched an entire skincare line. I've always been focused on the inside of the body out, but I get it. I should be also focusing on the external as well. And their biggest point was they said we were never going to launch this until we could figure out how to do it completely paraben free. So yeah. that's when I finally started learning about parabens because I just didn't really pay attention. I just, I, I, I just bought shampoo and I bought cologne and I don't yeah. even wear cologne anymore. <laughs> and you can spray. I mean, I tell people you can spray it on your clothes or something, but man, I wouldn't be spraying stuff that I, I but then it, your skin's going to absorb it from the clothes. It might, but it's better than spraying on your skin. I mean, okay. obviously you want to just go paraben free. Yeah right? Or don't use it at all. That's well, what I do. I just don't use it. But a, a, an old girlfriend of mine years ago told me this. She's like, what will you do is you spray it into the air and then, and then you, you walk, walk through it. it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And yeah. I did it the first time I felt a little flamboyant. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I say, it's, cause it's more too many guys, look, quick lesson guys. Uh, a lot of you are putting it on too heavily. So whether you want to do it from a a girl or, or significant other perspective, or you're listening to it from a scientific perspective, lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, and, and parabens are another one where people, they look at the science and they pull out a paper that says, oh, parabens are only weakly estrogenic or they're barely act like estrogen in your body. But yeah. here's the thing about parabens that makes it complicated is there's a n- large number of them. There's methyl paraben, there's propyl paraben, there's butyl paraben, right? You can just keep going on and on and on. Right. So yeah, you can find a study maybe that shows one of those specific types are, are less estrogenic than a lot of other things. It doesn't mean they're not estrogenic, right? I mean, they're still acting like estrogen, but maybe at a lesser degree. 
but then you can also find the studies with other parabens. So it gets a little bit complicated and that's where a lot of lay people just get frustrated. And, uh, and I do too, to, as a scientist reading these papers, just, just avoid parabens, you know? And I tell people on these shows, I always like to say, I want to see estrogenic free on the labels. I want a label to just, you know, get rid of all of this stuff, phthalates, parabens, BPA, right? Well, Triclosan. It's like when I talk to people about food, mm -hmm. it's like beginner one-on-one -on -one nutrition. And this isn't even like, I coach CrossFit on Fridays, but it's like, I'm, I don't even need to deal with this from a, from a more experienced athlete perspective. And this is like layman's everyday shopper. I always tell people, number one, traditional grocery stores try and stick to the perimeter. Now, unfortunately, a lot of grocery stores stick the bread aisle on the perimeter. So you got to watch out for those nasty corn tortillas you're just uh, showing me there. <laughs> That's right. um, but I think the important thing here of educating people on is that not just stick to the perimeter per se or going with whole, clean, fresh foods, but that is really what I'm talking about here is that I know we can't control all the chemical contamination, right? We could do what we can, try and buy organic, et cetera, et cetera, but at least try and go whole, clean because then you never have to worry about what what AJ is talking about right now, you know, Anthony's saying, listen, all this fine print in the labels. Well, if you bought it whole yep. and it's natural, there's never any fine print to read. That's right. Know. No, so. absolutely. In fact, I bought that package of corn tortillas. I was on my way to meet a professional hockey player and t tell him about my book. And uh, he's actually on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, nice. And I literally bought that on the way to the meeting just because – I knew that they were going to have the parabens and I, you know, it's nice to give somebody kind of a, uh, you know, a, a visual. <laughs> so they okay. remember. But well, and while, while we're talking here, because I have failed to bring this up so far, I'm sharing it for the YouTube listeners, but since we're so deep into this, I want to make sure we didn't skip over this because you sent over a great resource, um, which you guys do, you do have available on your website at ajconsultingcompany.com. Yep. But you, uh, this was one of the documents you sent me, which is the top 10 list of estrogenics. Right. Um, so I'm sharing it for the YouTube watchers. So if anybody listening on the podcast wants to go back, just go to live click on the episode and you'll see all the backlinks. This will all be on there. And the, I always embed the YouTube videos to make, so that way everything is in one place, but let's talk to this real quick. Let's go through your top 10 list here. Perfect. Yeah. Especially because we're talking about corn. Yeah. So <laughs> corn. Okay. So atrazine is my, is on this top 10 list. Atrazine is the second most used herbicide in North America. And okay. it's, it's crazy estrogenic. It acts like estrogen in your body and it's illegal in Europe because it's so unhealthy for us. It causes infertility. It causes weight gains, depression, all these things that artificial estrogens cause. Wow. And yet we're exposed to it like crazy in the United States, especially in the corn products, but in some other grains too. And even, even sometimes in the lawn, sometimes they're spraying it on the lawn. It ends up in the water supply. In fact, I've got the numbers here. So uh, atrazine has been found in America in the water at 17,000 nanograms per liter in some that, places. That doesn't surprise me. And, and just so people have a sense, I, I translated a lot of my numbers in my book. I, tra I tried to simplify everything and translate the numbers to nanograms per liter. Okay. Because a lot of environmental studies, that's the units that they use, right? Because they're measuring liters of stuff, a lot of stuff. Well, and nowadays I'm seeing, at least here in the U.S., some people can get that as a part of their home inspection, like, you can get a water test done. So that's yeah. important to relate to that because they may literally have that. You buy a house and yep. this doesn't have to be well water. This could be city water. I'm on city water. Like you yep. want to see some of those reports, like know what you're moving into. So this is good. That's a great way to relate it. Yeah. And, and to be honest, a lot of times in the cities, they've got birth control in the water because your body doesn't break that down. So nope. people are peeing that out into the water system and we're and not the antidepressants and all the other pharmaceuticals that's are in right. the water. Yeah. That's right. And, and the ones that are the worst are the, the lipophilic ones, the ones that act like oils and, you know, and, and have an impact on your body at real low levels. Mm -hmm. And so, like I was saying, nanograms per liter is the units I use. So 17,000 has been found in our water in atrazine, but your body, like for, as a man, right, Scott, yep. you've got, you've got about 20 nanograms per liter of estrogen. Right? Normal, like normal every day, every, every guy. Okay. Right. Every, every guy. I'm just guessing. I'm assuming you're out right around 20. Okay. Women, and, and people sometimes say, well, women must be really high. So they're probably, you know, more adapted to these artificial estrogen. Well, no, they're not actually women range between about 20 and 400 nanograms per liter, depending on the time of the month. So it's really sure. not, it's not 17,000, right? And they've, they've done studies on cows that are corn fed, obviously not organic corn, but just they feed them corn before they slaughter them. 
700,000 nanograms per liter of atrazine has been found in their blood. Wow. It sounds like I'm making that up. I, but I've you used know what? It, it, you're not because I, I just crazy. bought, for the first time ever late last year, I bought a quarter of a cow. And I don't consume yep. that much red meat. But thanks to having some uh, the year before from a friend of mine, I'm like, man, it's tasted amazing. Where'd you get it? He's like, well, it's a guy. He only raises what his customers buy ahead of time. Nice. Nice. So we know where it's coming from. There is some grain finishing that happens, but for the most part, it's mostly grass fed. So I was like, listen, if I can control where I'm sourcing, I'm going to invest in that. So yeah, I bought like $800 in meat that's in my freezer right now. Um, yeah. But yeah. The, the most important Great. thing there is I wanted to try and control my sourcing a little bit better and just ensure that at least from that that macronutrient level, I'm bringing a better source of fats and proteins in that I, can, I know where it came from. So yeah, and, it, and it was raised oh, yeah. right here an hour and a half from me uh, where I live in Pennsylvania. That's smart. And then you get a lot more DHA with that too, which is good for your brain and a lot oh, of Oh, wait a minute. Are you, don't you, don't I have to take DHA supplements? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I support some supplementation. I do, but it just cracks me up because everybody feels everything has to be a supplement nowadays. And I'm like, Oh, you got to be careful with that road. You got to balance it. So, yeah. Well, yeah. You eat those whole foods and, and, uh, it's amazing because, you know, they do these studies on, well, it, it ends up in the milk, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, if, if you measure it, you find the atrazine, you find some of these other estrogenics we're going to go through in a second. And people, scientists find drinking standard whole milk from a grocery store lowers your testosterone within, within one hour, it lowers at 16 or 17%. Yeah. And a lot of these are, well, these artificial estrogens, that's what, well, another thing they do is they lower your testosterone, free testosterone and total testosterone. I, I get into this conversation with people all the time because I grew up, okay, dude, I milked cows, okay? My, I had a small farm. We learned how to raise animals. We outsourced the farming of the fields. But then one of my jobs at 14, 15 years old was I would ride my 10 speed bike, you know, 10, 15 minutes down the road to a big dairy farm. And yeah, we, they would take wow. alfalfa off the fields, even though they raise a lot of alfalfa, they would feed a lot of silage is a type of, um, molasses infused, uh, grain based feed. It was yeah. just funny because you knew that's what they were feeding them. Cause those cows, like in order to clean the barns, <laughs> they used like a, a skid loader with a giant tire cut in half and they would just push the liquid manure and it would flow like a river <laughs> down the length of the barn into an underground tank. And I was wow. like, that can't be natural. Like, <laughs> so it's yeah. going to, and this is, this is back in, oh God, this is, this is the late eighties. So yeah. Yeah. there's a good example of that. But the Got point is yeah. I'm an adult now when I was a kid. Yeah. I drank, I drank milk. Like it was going out of style. My mom was like, God, you were like a milk machine. We even raised goats and I was drinking goat's milk. So like, so fast forward to today. My point here is that I'm an adult. My supposed bone strength, blah, blah, blah. That's already been developed. Me drinking milk as an adult is not needed anymore. And I know this pisses off my brother and my extended family because they still work in that industry as, as a, a, you know, cattle brokers and haulers. But my like, guys, like, I'm not saying don't promote milk or dairy, but as an adult, I don't need it anymore. And it's not a necessity. So yeah. that's just my point of view on that. I eat cheese, oh, yeah. though. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Well, again, it's the same thing, right? That stuff, these chemicals, these artificial estrogens end up in a lot of that stuff. And, and they, it happens in the bacon, too. I mean, be, just because we store it in our fat cells mm -hmm. doesn't mean animals are... I said know. the same thing. Yeah, your fat, fat is fat. So, yeah, and, and I, and so I, I consume bacon, I consume cheese, but I know where I'm sourcing it from nowadays. The past right. year and a half, I'm very adamant about where I get my bacon from, where I get the cheese from. I yeah. want to know where it came from. I want to know how it's sourced because I do want to introduce healthy fats into my diet. But to your point, I think we're talking about here is that source the healthy fats so they are a healthy fat and you're consuming that in a better uh medium. So yeah, yeah, it confounds a lot of the studies. I mean, people do studies, scientific research on bacon. And they make these claims that oh, the bacon is so darn unhealthy. Well, where are they getting the bacon? Right? Right. I mean, it's from these it's pigs sourcing. that are just loaded with artificial estrogen. And then if you're packaging it with nitrates, yeah, I mean, yeah. phase one of a beginner, beginner 101 for bacon, f source it locally, if you can make sure it says no nitrates. That's like beginner 101. I yeah. Now, obviously, you and I are talking about trying to help them get to the point where also figure out where it's coming from, how it's being raised, and everything else, because that's getting much down to the cellular level of the fat that's on that meat. But the point is, guys, like nitrates, definitely get rid of that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go through all this in my book, by the way. But I want to jump to number two on this. On yeah. this. I want to go back to my top 10 list because it ties in perfectly. We're, we're here. still sharing. We're still sharing. There yeah, and, and mycoestrogen. So this, we've talked about phytoestrogen. We talked about atrazine. We talked about BPA, we, some of these other artificial estrogen chemicals. But another one, another huge one is mycoestrogen. That means mold estrogen. Ooh, and, yeah. and it's essentially, it's literally estrogen, you know, or a chemical that mold secretes that acts like estrogen in our bodies. And it wouldn't be such a huge problem, except that a lot of our grains and a lot of our other food products that we have get moldy. And shipment. And, yeah, and, and, and we and don't storage. regulate. It's, it's, it's crazy. I was talking with uh, Ben Coomber last week uh, on his podcast. And, and, of course, he's over in the UK. He's got, one of these num- he's got one of the number one health podcasts over in the UK. And over in the UK, they actually regulate how much mold you know, how much mycoestrogen, not just mold, but actually they measure the mycoestrogen and they, they have a specific allowable limit. And if you go over that limit, they don't let you sell it. And it, interestingly, Europe has even a more rigorous, uh, you know, limit for the mold, for mycoestrogen. And guess what the United States has for a, a allowable limit of mycoestrogen? I don't know, none. Like they, just, they don't care. <laughs> there's no, yeah, there's no, there's and no. And really, I'm not, I'm not going to make an excuse for it. But to be fair, I know per population that we are just producing and manufacturing and consuming at a much higher level, which is probably why we haven't addressed it yet because they probably don't even know how to even approach it because of the the massive quantities that we are producing in this country. Let's be real, we ship massive container loads of grain to other countries uh, to, to help support their hunger. The unfortunate thing is that we're spreading our mistakes to other countries and now causing our, our health issues to go that way as well. So yeah, in, yeah. in those countries like Europe and everything else, I think it's much more compartmentalized, which is why they've had success with this is because they can control it, I think, a little bit better at that level. So, yeah, And people, you know, scientists call mycoestrogen immunotoxic. They call it reproductive, a reproductive toxicant. I mean, they're not afraid to just like put the hammer down on this substance. And yet it's still, like I say, it's still found in, at high levels in a lot of our foods. And it, by the way, another underlying health issue you see with a lot of, the, with, with my top 10 list with these artificial estrogens we're talking about is immune system dysfunction. So mm. when, when a woman is pregnant, you've, you know, you've got this foreign person inside of you, right? You, you don't want your immune system to attack the baby and destroy the baby. No. So, uh, so obviously the estrogen is involved and scientists call it immunosuppressive and immunostimulative. I have actually uh, read those terms. Yes. Yeah. Which is really ironic because obviously those are kind of opposite, right? You're stimulating the immune system and you're suppressing it at the same time with the same chemical estrogen. Yeah, there's a balance which- there. Yeah, which we don't totally understand how that works, but it, it I mean, that's what happens. It's reality. We're not making the rules here. But again, but, if, if to your point, if we are in a healthy state and we're only introducing healthy things into our body, however that works, should work, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. But that's, that's where these artificial chemicals come in. So then you add these mycoestrogens or phytoestrogens. I mean, soy definitely causes some thyroid problems, some, some immune system reaction problems. You know, and, and all these artificial estrogens, you start, when you start researching it, you find a lot of immune, allergies, asthma, eczema, a lot of uh, immune system dysfunction, you know, health problems, yeah. immune system health problems related to the dysfunction of the immune system. Wow. Yeah. So we got, so. That, that's, a, that's a heavy number two. Uh, <laughs> now, let's, uh, how about number three here? You got, is it pronounced atrazine? That's right. That's the corn. That's the herbicide that they're uh. spraying. Yeah. So obviously now that's our sprayed death, right? Oh, it's so bad. So one thing that I I did learn from that detox class back in 2010, and I'll never forget to this day is the Latin definition to IDES. So long story short to our listeners, it it means death. So if we're spreading herbicides and blah, blah, all these different IDES on our food or our plants, you're literally spraying death. So now how that death chemical is then transmutated through the plant and then consumed into our bodies, who knows what that, I mean, obviously now we're seeing it years and years of unregulation. Like we don't know 
or we're now we're learning, <laughs> now we're knowing, but that's the example. Like that's why I'm all about detoxing. That's why even yeah. as people are like, Oh, well, how could you take a day off from eating? Like you're going to lose your, your muscle gains. I'm like, actually, no. Um, if you understand anything about human growth hormone, which you don't need to inject it, people get your body healthy enough and you produce all the HGH you need. Long story short, your HGH production happens when you're sleeping, when your body's going through rest and recovery, when you're in a healthy, deep rate of sleep. Well, okay, take that and amplify that by removing the chemicals from your life and the hormonal influences from your life and your natural HGH production will improve. So when I go through a fasting detox, all I'm doing is I'm extending that period while my body's doing the rest and recovery and I'm not spending time focusing on consuming foods that are possibly toxic. My mm -hmm. body's going through this massive detoxing state. So yeah, man, when I come out of a fast, I'm, I'm pumped, dude, because I know that over the next couple of days, my HGH production is going to be nice. It's going to be strong and I'm going to be improving my lean muscle mass retention and building. And again, coming from a non PhD, this is just me after studying seven years. So yep. please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Not at all. No, that's solid. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I mean, yeah, that's, I don't even have anything to add to that. <laughs> Sweet. I can drop the mic on that one. Yeah. I've been working on this. I've been working on my presentation. So oh, uh, I'm trying to hang with you guys because I have, I mean, this is, this is literally seven years of just me studying in my free time. So, well, well uh, I, I feel like I should bring up the epigenetic component here. Yes. Because I don't want to run out of time and, and miss out on that because, you know. Yeah, I want to respect your time too. Like I'm good until for like another 15 minutes. So. Okay, good. Yeah. You have to tell let's, me. Let's pack it in. I, don't, I, I forgot to. Well, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to load this up. I don't care. I, sometimes we go over an hour and today's going to be one of those days. That's why podcasts are great because you just hit pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so, uh, you know, a lot of scientists, they like to use this term, the dose makes the poison. So in other words, you know, they make this argument like glutamine is toxic or tryptophan, you know, these natural amino acids, they're even toxic if you put enough in a rat or something like that. Sure. And yeah. And there's kind of some truth to that, but the, the, they kind of use that kind of phrase, the dose makes the poison, and they, they kind of put it onto these artificial estrogen chemicals, all these chemicals. And, you know, the problem is, is these act on, on our bodies at really low levels in some cases, and it takes years to manifest the health problems. And uh, one of those health problems that we're discovering just now is uh, hormonal alterations to your epigenetics, especially through these artificial estrogen. So these these artificial estrogen chemicals we've been talking about, they literally act on your DNA. They, uh, you know, the estrogen receptor naturally acts directly on DNA. And I know it's getting a little bit technical maybe, but this changes marks on your DNA called epigenetics. And if you want, I can maybe give an analogy to explain what epigenetics is. Uh, yeah, actually, because um, epigenetics came up, I believe, in my last episode that I recorded with Dr. Wolfson. Nice. And he'll, he'll be airing in the next week or two. I don't know, this, this, this past week, man, we've, we've crammed so many new co-hosts in. I got to look at my schedule because I think we have like enough episodes for the next month now. Uh, nice. But we, this is coming up more and more and people need to understand yeah. that in more of a layman's terms because yeah. this is important. People need to understand this stuff and not get complicated. Yeah, in my book, I use musical notes as an analogy. And I have hmm. a couple analogies up my sleeve, but I'll just go with that one because it's pretty simple. If you kind of understand musical notes, and the way I explain epigenetics is if you were to see musical notes written on a staff, uh, you could pass, you know, say you've got the song, Mary had a little lamb, right? It's just note, 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 you know, just single black dots written on a, on a lines. And you can give that to somebody else who's a musician and they can play Mary had a little lamb, just dun, 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 just one note at a time. That's yeah. like your, that's like your DNA, right? You can pass that to somebody. They can play the same song. It's not really going to change much, but you can also add a s additional notes on top of those notes called chords, you know, and, or other f com more complex notes. So you're still playing Mary Had a Little Lamb, but now you're adding other notes and chords and more song, you know, more, maybe more instruments, whatever. So more complexity. And you can pass that complexity on to somebody and they can play that same song or they can change the song, you know, the complexity. That's the epigenetics. That's the marks on top of those DNA marks. Wow. And the most important aspect from a scientific perspective here, the stuff that's just coming out is that, and then the talk I gave in Florida on this that inspired the book was that these epigenetic marks can be passed to future generations. So you yes. can literally change. I was hoping your, you were going to this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, we are, we are literally spreading 
something yep. as common as obesity because yep. It, yep. you have retrained your fat cells or your body to the point of, of obesity. And a real quick side note on that is that like literally once you've filled, once your fat cells, your, your, every human being is built, you know, born with a certain quantity of fat cells. Am I correct on that? Uh, it's debatable, but yeah. Okay. There's a debate on that. But the point is like we have a set amount of fat cells temporarily. Yep. If your lifestyle gets so unhealthy and you, your fat cells have done their job and they've protected you and now they're all inflamed and right, we're getting fat, right? Yep, yep, uh, but now we've stored and stored and stored. Well, then your body's like, wait a minute, I'm still toxic. I have nowhere to hide this stuff. I need to make more fat cells. So now you're creating new fat cells and more fat cells to store more and more and more. And then here we have the rampant obesity because your hormones are all jacked up. Your, your, your leptin and your ghrelin levels are all arguing with each other saying, you know, no, no, I'm not satiated. Yes, I am satiated. Yada, yada, yada. Point is yep. now that's your program until you reprogram yourself and fix it. Yep. That's your new program. Now you're yep. pregnant. Now you're having a child. That's right. You have that child while you're still in that state. There is a lot of studies that prove that that is now being passed on to the child. That's right. Now, again, this can be reprogrammed. Am I wrong on this or right on this? 100% right. You can exercise. Okay. You can change your diet. You can do it in a lot of different ways. But yeah. to be fair, Sleep. exercise doesn't fix this. It's you got to realign your hormonal levels. You got to detoxify the body. You got to get leptin and ghrelin to start talking to each other properly. Uh, and then... Yep. The exercise is the nice finishing touch. But I tell people all the time, like, dude, don't go pay for a gym membership if you're still eating like a fast food slob because yeah. you're just flushing money down the toilet. I'd rather see you invest money in good, whole, clean foods. Start dialing your nutrition in over yep. the next you know, two to three months plus. So that way you're starting to finally get your body to start figuring out the hormonal issues and get that dialed in. Because then when you do add in the exercise and you start amplifying the exercise, then you get that boost and you get that flow. Yeah, Again, this is just from my my experience. <laughs> no, the diets the diet's more important than exercise for sure. Yeah, some people say it's eighty percent diet, twenty percent exercise. You know, it's hard to know exactly because obviously that differs based on different people and different genetics and different epigenetics. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah, and then you talk to people like Dr. Jack Cruz, who's Mr. Mitochondriac, and he tells you, well, all that is nothing if, you're, if your cellular health at the mitochondrial level is unhealthy. He's like, so obviously, are you stuck in a cubicle all day, you know, under unnatural light? Are you getting outdoors enough, um, not even just exercising, just get outdoors into the healthy sunlight? Are you, no. where, where is your circadian rhythm at, right? Are you sleeping no. properly? Are you getting right. the right rest and recovery and is no. your, it, this is all a program, guys. And it's it, interesting, though. It's interesting because sleep and exercise impact your hormones. So this all kind of ties together. You know, you can't totally isolate any of these things. Yep. And the epigenetic thing, I mean, just to reiterate for people, it's exactly what you said. You can have quote unquote skinny genes. So you can actually have a great genetic background that kind of naturally predisposes you to be skinny. Yeah. But then you start eating these artificial estrogens or rubbing them on your skin through your sunscreen or through yep. your fragrance. And you can literally become obese and the crazy part is you can pass on that obesity disposition yeah. to your children. And they've even done studies now. It's coming out the third generation, right? Well, they're calling it um, obesogens. Yeah, obesogens. I, I believe. There's another yep. term being tossed around too. And I forget. I, yep. I, I'm literally, I'm so fired up right now. I'm blanking. But did I get connected to you because of Vinny Tortorich? Vinny, yep. yeah. <laughs> so again, Vinny talks about this, right? It's like, you know, Yes, there is that rare percentage of, what, depending on who you're talking to, it's either a 20 to 30% number of the populace does have amazing genetics. So yeah, you could probably sit down and eat bowl after bowl of rice and corn and yep. you just have really powerful genetics to battle that. But I challenge you, I guarantee you can't prolong that for a long period of time. Eventually, even that genetic code will get broken by yep. all that crap. And you're going to fall down that chute as well. But you might be able to survive longer and maybe not be as susceptible as the other, you know, 80 to 70, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the population, which is what we're kind of referring to here. Because long story short, that's why I tell people like, guys, like if I went by genetics, if you look at my family today, everybody is overweight. I love my family, but I, I, I have to be real about this. Nobody looks like me. This is my lifestyle. This is what I have developed and maintained over years of commitment. So that's right. Yeah, and, and, and the crazy thing to me is that infertility can be passed on. Hmm. And, and so you can look great. You can look like you're skinny and you can maybe even, you know, be proud of yourself and whatever. But if you continue to expose yourself to these artificial estrogens, suddenly you become infertile or your children become more and more infertile. 
and that's, I think, this kind of the scariest aspect because you do find a lot of people that are infertile. It's rising like crazy. Just like obesity is rising, by the way. One third of Americans are obese. And yep. allergies are rising. Breast cancer is up 250% since 1980. I mean, all these things that, that I'm talking about in my book from the artificial estrogen exposures, right? They're all on the rise. And a lot of them we're discovering are being passed to future generations. And I'm telling you right now, it's only gonna, we're only going to uh, start to reveal more problems that are being passed to future generations, right? We're just barely starting to find some of these. And scary. we're only going to find more and more, and it's going to start looking bleaker and bleaker based on these artificial chemical exposures. Yeah. It's, it's, and again, let, let, just to take a deep breath here, <laughs> slow down a second. Yep. We're very passionate, okay? So our listeners, hey, this is what Live the Fuel is all about. We get fired up. But let's be real. We're not trying to get you guys to freak out. We just That's want right. you to start listening to your inner physician. And if you're so unhealthy that you, you can't literally hear it, you have to start taking some of these steps, just some of this knowledge and putting, we're not saying you've got to turn everything around overnight because psychologically you will fail. Like massive shifts instantaneously always break down. You have to start putting in small repetitions, small changes. You got to start feeling it because admittedly my first detox, my first cleanse, my, my taste buds changed. Like I was like, wow, things tasted better getting the, yeah. the toxins out of my body. Uh, like some of the supplements I was taking, I couldn't stand them. But then two weeks later after the detoxing days, I was like, Oh, they're not that bad now. Oh, interesting. Things taste different. Yeah. It yeah. was like, that was my first wake up call back in 2010. I'm like, Whoa, nice. there's nice. something to this man. That's like, awesome. Yeah. yeah. But that's just it. A lot of us we're, we become so numb. And that's my favorite word for this. We are literally numb. Our, Comfortably our, numb. <laughs> the, the human body is a powerful machine. We are one of the most amazing inventions on Mother Earth. <laughs> and yet, we have tuned ourselves out so far that you guys don't even know that things could taste better or that energy can be improved naturally or you can finally fix your sleeping issues all without drugs. I'm yeah, a very, very big anti-drug guy. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of these things, it's not that big of a commitment. Like the sunscreen estrogenic, we didn't even get to yet. Yeah. It's basically that's, uh, number four. No, that's number five. Sorry. Yeah, number five. I mean, it's, we skipped over I mean we, we've skipped around a lot. Yeah. We've yeah. covered actually almost basically all of them, but I wanted to maybe just throw that one in there because it's benzophenone and oxybenzone. That's another benzophenone chemical. Mm -hmm. I go through, I kind of explain this in my book and methyl benzaldine camphor. Again, to our listeners, guys, this will all be in the show notes. And right now, this is being shared on the YouTube video. So if you go back and watch it, I literally have the word document on here. And yeah. again, when the show notes come out, don't worry. This document is linked to its website. So I will include that in the show notes. That way, you guys can go right to that spot and download this and print yeah. this to help your lives. So. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and I mean... It, you, I'm, I guarantee you, if you go to the store and you just buy the cheapest sunscreen, it will have these chemicals in it. Okay. You don't even need to remember the names. It'll have benzophenone. It'll have oxybenzone. It'll have 4 methylbenzaline. It'll have some benzophenone chemical. Words that you way. can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, chemicals you can't pronounce. But, but uh, uh, benzophenone, by the way, illegal in Europe, another one. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of contrasting in my book. I did a lot of research on this because I'm, I was curious, well, What's, why is Europe's obesity rate so much less than America? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and what are they, what, how, how are they approaching these chemicals? Well, hey, if it's estrogenic, they're being safe and they're just making them illegal in a lot of cases. Before I started geeking out on this stuff and even heard about parabens, yeah. one of the biggest things that I learned about, and again, I can thank a company like Isogenics who taught me this, was I had no idea there was different levels of processing of proteins, for example. So, like, I know Vinny Tortorich, he's very against protein powders, but Let's, let's be real. People are consuming them. I consume them. And I had known that there was a difference of denatured versus undenatured. It is a, uh, basically undenatured is the best form you can get. And it's very hard to find. Ours come from New Zealand from grass fed farms and they only process it in an undenatured way, which costs nice. more because yep. it takes longer. Uh, you're, you basically, I think he said they have to keep it in a low temperature, high pressurized environment for a true undenatured process. So that way they don't kill the natural enzymes. All the natural enzymes still stay in there. So that's a big thing that I learned years ago. I had, I geeked out about. So obviously this yeah. is now way above that, but it's important yeah. to understand yeah. this. Like, guess what? The reason why we're using farms in New Zealand is because they can't trust the farms here. There, everything you're talking about is illegal. I so know. they know they don't it's have true. to worry about people spraying stuff on the grass that the grass-fed farms in New Zealand are using because 
it's just grass. It's New yeah. Zealand beautiful grasslands. <laughs> the photographs you see online are real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and part of it, one of the things about the sunscreen, for example, you know, people don't have to go and live in a cave like you were just saying, because it's easy to change your sunscreen. I mean, come on, you know, yeah. that's not going to be that difficult. Some of these are difficult, you know, avoiding corn or just buying, you know, corn some is of these, everywhere. Some of these, yeah, we are, some of these we are things. A corn country. Some of these things, you know, they take a little bit of a commitment, and and it's worth it. It's worth the effort. But I mean, come on with the sunscreen, you know, and the red That's food easy. coloring, there's yeah. no reason you should be drinking stuff with red food coloring in it, you know? Yeah. That's <laughs> why I love Vinny's new uh, vitamin company. I literally yeah. use his vitamins because nice. there's nothing added. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's not, not from my isogenics world because I'm like, I don't care. I even promote Pure Vitamin Club on my resources page on the website because they did it right. It's yeah. just magnesium or it's just vitamins or soon the B12 is coming out. It's just B12. Like you don't need yeah. to add false crap in like just yeah. keep it clean people like yeah. like number yeah. six on the list here the red numbers three and 40 like dude why yeah. you don't need color yeah. so the, yeah. so who cares yeah. that the vitamin is red orange green the reason why you're taking a vitamin is because it's vitamins <laughs> yeah now people i mean it's all marketing and you know now we're processing so much food it just comes out looking like brown mush and they got to do something to it's amazing how how these companies are so committed and dedicated to keeping red food coloring legal. It's just blows my mind, but it, I guess it's because the foods because are just Because they need so it to cover up what they've done. They yeah. need it because yeah. they've over manufactured. That's why I, I literally haven't eaten fast food in like 15 years, like a Burger King or a McDonald's. I, I will correct myself. I've had to eat there when I was firefighting because we were traveling all over the West and that's where they stopped our vehicles. But I would always try and order chicken salads or whatever. But dear yeah. God, man, like that stuff, yeah. Vinny even talks about it, man. When you strip all the crap off, if you just try and eat the burger by itself, I challenge you to eat just the burger patty by yourself. I love Vinny's story on that because you will probably just spit it out. It just tastes like chemicals. It's over manufactured yeah. crap. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and I mean, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like red, red number three has been up. It's been proposed to the FDA to outlaw red number three over twenty. I think it was twenty six times. Over twenty times. Wow. And they, then they just continue to say, no, we're going to keep it legal. No, we're going to keep it legal. And it just keeps coming up because scientists, you know, are, it's estrogenic. Yeah. And, it, you know, you can just start listing these health problems in these certain categories. And, and not to mention the unknowns, like I talk about the epigenetics. We don't even know a lot of this stuff that we're passing on. We may be passing on depression to our future generations. We don't even know. Mm -hmm. And yet we're, we're still just allowing these things to be legal and they're so unnecessary in some cases. I mean, it's crazy. So unnecessary. It's, it's, we take, we, we, I love the USA, but we do have a history of occasionally trying to take the easy way out. And yeah. when it comes to health, we got to stop this guys, man. We got to, got to put ourselves first, our health first. Yeah. Even if our government's not going to protect us, we need to do that ourselves. And I'm not very political. I'm just saying, dude, this is your health. Own it, man. Take responsibility for it. Um, Again, to the listeners, we got to bring this to a close, man. We've been rapping for a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love, man. This is good. You're definitely coming back. when, If you're game, you're coming back, man, uh, as another uh, co-host. Vinny's been on three times already. Nice. Um, he and I go, go off on a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, again, we mentioned earlier in the episode, just so you guys know, I'm going to have this document of his top 10 listed. He, whatever he wants to send me, I'm putting it into the show notes so you guys can get back to his site easily and find this stuff because we already talked about earlier in the episode, we talked about parabens from the, from the perfumes, but uh, the, the, the phthalates and the BPA and the BPS that's in your baby bottles, for God's sakes. I mean, that's number eight, number nine. So the top 10 list is powerful. It's a great, easy document to get, um, and we'll make sure we have that linked in the notes. So thanks. Uh, back, back to you, sir. Great. We've got, we got to bring the episode to a close and all of our co-hosts, just so you know, I give you, you the final word. Even if people forget all this ridiculous amount of knowledge bombs that you dropped today <laughs> and the passion you and I exchanged back and forth, what is, a, what is a, a, a small, powerful message like for your final words that you want to close the episode out with that people are going to remember about you? So that way they, they do want to come back and listen to this episode or do go back and go to your website. Like what is, what is a, me, a parenting message you're trying to get out there with all, everything you're doing in this world? Oh, well, I mean, let me close it as like a true scientist, right? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the title of a paper. I want people to either look up or just I'll explain it so they don't even have to look it up. And then give me the link for that too when you email and I'll, me I'll send the actual <laughs> paper to you. 
and it's called chronic exposure to the herbicide atrazine, which we've been talking about, mm -hmm. causes mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance. It's published in the journal of uh, PLOS, Public Library of Science. And that paper, it shows, and by the way, I'm bringing that up because it's representative of all of these artificial estrogens we've been talking about. So they show in that paper that atrazine, this artificial estrogen, it causes fat gains in, in rats, of course. They're not going to give, you know, inject atrazine into humans for the study, but it causes their cells to create fat. And here's the interesting part about it. Again, it's representative to, of all of these artificial estrogens. They, they maintained the same exact calorie numbers in all of the rats they tested. They gave them the same amount of exercise, and they gave them, quote, unquote, low doses of atrazine in their drinking water for one group, and then the other group, they just gave them regular drinking water. And it's crazy, right? The same yeah. calories, the same exercise, and the rats with the low, do low amount of atrazine in the water got fat, and you can see it. And that's what I want people to know. It, calorie counting, you know, it doesn't even matter in some of these cases if and you're loading yourself up with these artificial estrogens and these chemicals. And so you really want to be aware and start to educate yourself on this because knowledge is power in this topic. There we go, guys. Knowledge is power. And again, real quick, what was the name of that article again? Uh, that one's called Chronic Exposure to the Herbicide Atrazine Causes Mitochondrial Dysfunction and Insulin Resistance. It's a science paper by researchers. Boom. All right, guys, this will be linked in the show notes. We're not gonna, we, I want to make sure you guys come back and get this off the website. So seriously, now it is power. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, Dr. Anthony, Dr. J, uh, AJ, all his different titles. Um, this has been a great episode. Make sure you check him out. Uh, again, we'll have all of his links, social media. You can follow him. Everything's going to be put into the show notes as always. But again, guys, this is what we're all about. We're here to fuel your health, your business, your lifestyle. So keep living the fired up epic life. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. All right, brother, if you're fearing from the Thanks. podcast, this will be out to the YouTube as well. Get me your email then back then with whatever images you want, these links. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm pumped. And then let's look at a future episode, just like Vinny, man. We got to get you back yeah. on. You got a lot of knowledge to share. And I, I love bringing experts on. So, Thanks. I, I love yeah. getting out there. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the energy flow, flow today. So I'm, uh, That's fun. I have a different like, persona yeah. than Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. You have a lot of you have a lot of good scientific depth without being a scientist. You know, I have a degree in marketing and psychology. <laughs> yeah, it's it's embarrassing. Some of these scientists, how little they know about their own diet. I mean, it's it's like I was talking to somebody else on a podcast, and they were saying the doctors are sometimes the most unhealthy people. They're smoking. You know, they're eating garbage. Yeah, and I mean, it's just it, it blows it's your mind. They, I, I challenge everybody. I say, listen, if you're going to an MD who's overweight, ask them. <laughs> Yeah. How much they actually know about nutrition. Yeah. If they are the ones who are telling you how to fix your health and your nutrition, hire yep. a new doctor. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's, it's insane. So yeah, appreciate this it. has been awesome, man. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to helping you grow your brand more and getting more content out there for you. Like I said, Likewise. that tip is, man, for now, that podcast link, until yep. you got your show going, dude, embed all okay. the shows you've been on because that's going to okay. show authority. <clears throat> and it's going to create all those backlinks to their sites anyway. It's like, hey, as seen on ding, 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 and put that yep. all in there for now. So, I will, for sure. I'll do that today. Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. And then you'll be able to add me in too. <laughs> oh, no, I'm planning on it. Yeah, when is this one going to air? Do you have any sense? A month from now or so? Or? Oh, no, I, everything. I don't want to go more than a month out because there's so much stuff happening in people's lives and their brands. Um, this, it won't be next week. It's probably going to be, I think it's the week after. I think you'll be in cool. two weeks, but That's I great. always Thanks. email everybody out and let them know. And that I publish everything across all the social media channels anyway. So as long as you and I are friends and linked and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and everything else, then you'll see me tagging you when I, I blast everything out. Cause today, uh, actually at two o'clock today, I'm doing a big social media blast for Ali Oaks's episode from PEMF. So uh, she already got one tweet this morning, but then I want to hit, and then I actually I already got her on Facebook too. So I got to hit LinkedIn and the other channels today at two. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Right, yeah. I appreciate it. I'll be doing my part on my end. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Teamwork. And that, yeah, right. like I said, think of another topic that you really want to dig deeper into. Maybe it'll connect you as like a steam builder for the blubber uh, piece. Okay. And, yeah. and we'll, we'll dig into that. Thanks. I'll be, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, congrats right. on the move and I wish you success in, in, back in your home state. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. And I, we'll I will tell again. you four of my firefighting buddies all came from Minnesota. So Oh, uh, nice. You guys I know, have I a actually, lot of fire. 
I love the culture. I mean, that's a big part of it. I hate the, the cold, cold weather, but I do love the people. They are really friendly. It's different than Boston. That's for sure. <laughs> well, and I believe from your state, you guys created Lindsey Vaughn, oh, which is people, the yeah, world John, champion U S skier, yeah. even though you guys don't really have a big mountain there, but she just did a lot of laps over the years as a kid and she became a yeah. world champion, you know, U S ski team. So yeah. as a yeah. skier, I'm a big <laughs> fan. So oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Scott. All right, sir. Take care. Have a good yeah, day. Peace. Thanks, you too. Later. <clears throat>